I'm Natalie. I'm Lori. And I'm Carla. <laughs> and we're with you for the 2022 yearly cross stitch challenge discussion. We're going to lay out for you what you can choose to participate in a vast array of your favorite cross stitch groups on Facebook, should you want to. And I'll just say that there are so many, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just the ones that between the four of us, we are going to be participating in, we think this year. So mm -hmm. I think you need to grab a big cup of coffee, sit back and get your stitching out because you won't need to look at anything. Yep, cheers Carla. And um, just get, you know, get the pens out, see what you can join. Um, as far as I know, most of these groups are open at the moment, except for Daily 30. Um, so you can jump on and join them if you wish. All right, well, let's get started with our usual first one of Daily 30, Laurie. What are we doing this year? Okay, Daily 30s was announced today. It is the Animal Adventure Challenge. It's a yearly challenge. Of course, we've established that. And so basically the premise is you're going on an animal hunt and you're going to hunt for different groups of animals. So um, each month there are eight groups of animals and there are different modes of transportation, five means of transportation. And it's kind of like a tier. Um, the first one starts off at 100 stitches, which is to walk, then bike is 200 stitches, then to drive 300 stitches, to sail 400 stitches, to fly 500 stitches. Of course, with daily 30, you have the hourly equivalent. So if you're not counting stitches, then 100 stitches for one hour and so on. So basically every month you need to meet a goal and there's different tiers of goals and I tried to break them down for you. So the minimum requirement is 500 stitches you have to stitch on each whip, each of your three declared whips, which you had to declare between, sorry, before December 22nd. Those are your three whips that can be used in this challenge, only those three whips. So you need to stitch a minimum of 500 stitches a month to earn a prize entry. And um, you need to hit all three different whips. So if you're going to stitch on your different whips, you have to pick a mode of transportation. So you need to pick one of your whips and stitch a walk for 100 stitches or stitch up for a bike or using your bike for 200 stitches, et cetera. Um, the moderator or the administrator, uh, Jaffe, she does not want you to um, mix whips within your mode of transportation you've chosen. So you can't start stitching for your 200 stitches for a bike ride and then switch your one of your three whips in between on those 200 stitches. But you can select your whip within those three whips for any mode of transportation. So you don't always have to stitch number one, whip number one for a walk or you know, whip number one for a bike. You can mix it up. You just can't within a single post for that mode of transportation, mix your whips. Got it? So the minimum requirement again is 500 stitches for one entry per month um, on the three whips. But if you wanna kick it up a notch, there's a ranger pass and that allows you to switch your whips in a future month, similar to the amulet or antidote in zombie run where you stitch a minimum amount of stitches and you earn the right to make modifications to your selection in future months. So the Ranger Pass is 300 stitches on each animal. So there's eight groups and you need to do 300 stitches within those eight groups. That doesn't mean it's one whip per eight group. You could walk some, you could ride some. And remember, you have to touch all three of your whips in a month. So you mix it up however you want to mix it up. If you're double dipping, there's a lot of room to play in there. So to kick it up further, there are some bonus items. So within the year, if you um, use one mode of transportation in each animal group, so every month for the eight groups, you use at least one mode of transportation. So you might do walk, 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 fly, or, you know, et cetera. But if you hit each group and you maintain your minimum for your ranger pass, then you're getting that bonus in addition to that. Then the extreme would be 
all modes of transportation in each animal group. So that's an additional bonus. Whew, that's a lot. So I recommend you go to the file section in Daily 30. Jaffe has done an extremely good job of outlining examples um, for minimum requirements, for extreme, and somewhere in the middle, and definitely to earn your ranger pass. Um, she is answering questions. I see her on the threads answering questions, and that, that's a good thing too. But this is just to give you an overview and to get you all excited about the event. I'm excited. Are y'all excited? Oh, yeah. Can't wait. <laughs> Just have to work Absolutely. out how to break it down. And Absolutely. Yeah. I am, um, I like Jaffa has got a little thing like this that you can print off. I've just done mm -hmm. one of my own. For, and what I'm figuring because of the level I want to do, I'm going to have to at least do 100 down on each of the animals and then I'm going to have to go across. So I'm going to have to basically do that as a minimum. And I think that's where I'm going to aim because there's so many other things to do. I don't want to overkill on one group. But if you're only in one group, go for it. <laughs> Absolutely. And some of those extreme goals, um, you do want to give it some thought if you might want to do the extreme because one month of not doing something might knock you out of that extreme level. So do a little planning up front and you'll be happy throughout. Yeah. And that's I'll why my whip goes and I'm sorry, I'm using my whip goes to feed my animal hunt. So mm -hmm. I'm breaking it down by however many stitches I need to do on whatever was called in WIPCO and mm -hmm. using those on my animal hunts, if um, it's yeah. the same project that yeah, I think. You'll be using a lot of travel way. passes to switch things out and yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Awesome. Um, and that's why we're giving you time. Like the, the groups have published everything. It's currently, gosh, I don't even know what the date is here. <laughs> it's currently the 28th of December here and the 27th in America. So mm -hmm. you've got a couple of days to plan. So use your time wisely. And we'll get this out to you today so that you can you can watch it and get ready. Yeah. All right. The next it, one. Pens at the ready. Yeah. The <laughs> next one that's um, a big one, but we're only talking about the yearly events at the moment. We'll be back for a monthly. But this is the yearly. Nat, semi-sane yearly. What have they got? They're doing a calendar. So what they're asking you to do is to pick your favourite monthly motif design. So, you know, how you get the the little calendars where there's a little house for January and houses for February and so on throughout the year um, or flowers. There's so many options. Um, it's, it's pick a monthly motif design or any 12 motif set. So for example, think of the little house needlework, Nutcracker Village or Santa's Village and things like that. Perfect because they're, they're 12 motif sets. Um, you are each of those little motifs have a minimum size so to be either 1000 stitches or of a 40 by 40 stitch area it doesn't have to be full coverage in each of those on what they do ask you though is that on your January post you make a statement of what your monthly goal is going to be. So is it to finish each of those monthly motifs or is it to just get your minimum thousand stitches in that design? Um, as with the group, semi-sane stitches is open to, I believe it's open, but they do ask that you have a password to enter the group, I believe. Um, is that still the case? I'm, not, I'm honestly not sure at the moment. Yeah. yeah, just give it a try because uh, they had a change in admins. So I haven't actually heard anything about membership since then. So give no. it a whirl. You might be able to get in. Well, who knows? That's right. Um, they do like their membership to remain active. So participation in at least one event, this might be it. Um, but there are so many other monthly oh. events that are coming up that we're not going to talk about today. No. Um, but it's absolutely what there are some really seriously fun events and this looks like one of them i'm really excited awesome thanks now um whipgo carla mentioned already is another great one now this is probably the easiest most stress-free um challenge you can do for the year you make yourself a whipgo board which is like a bingo board and basically you declare and you can still start it now it doesn't matter if you start late declare a whip with a goal for each of the 24 spaces 
in a board. And then um, Jessie Marie on the WITGO 2022 side on about the 27th of the month declares the two numbers and they're what you work on. So um, it's something as simple, you set your own goals. It might be you just want to touch that whip. You want to do a hundred stitches or two hours stitching on it. Or you might have big goals and want to finish it. Whatever, whatever works for you and you can have a different goal for every whip. So the numbers drawn this month were two and 19. So we're not going to go through our go boards today because they'll probably scare you, but two and 19 are the numbers. So you just put there and then every month she picks out two numbers and you work on those two goals for that month. It's really easy and really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. It's my first year doing whip go this I year. So <laughs> excited. <laughs> Even if you're a monogamous stitcher and you have other crafts, the whip go goes across all crafts. She says you can diamond paint, you can crochet, knit, and put your goals in. And I've seen people that have actually marked number of days that they want to work on it. So it's definitely got some interesting goals out there. If you look at other people's boards, you'll see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, Carla, what's happening then with survival of the stitchiest? I know how exciting. Exciting is this. You didn't even know about this one. So Survival of the Stitchiest announced today that they we have been on a bounty hunt of sorts as a team in hunting many monsters. Well, this for the yearly event that they've announced, they're going to have an individual hunting challenge. Mm -hmm. So we are going on a hunt. And what we would do is um, your stitches you have all year and you can double dip them with other tasks. So if you're in a group with um, survival of the stitches, your stitches can count both for your individual hunt and for the weekly challenges that are going on as the team groups. Um, but it says your style of the bounty hunt event is going on just kind of the same as what we're doing now. So basically to give you an example, um, the, the first, monster we're hunting is a haggis for 250 stitches so you do 250 stitches and you captured a haggis then the next one is a jackalope it's 500 stitches you do your 500 stitches and you captured the jackalope so it's really just putting your stitches and and having them work for you and see how far you can get she said she's going to be adding more as the year goes on right now the biggest hunt that's posted is a 25,000 stitches for a hydra so and they just keep going up in increments so if you're a big stitcher and you want to start at the top you don't have to do it in any order that I could see you can pick and choose if you have a focus piece maybe you want to assign that to those bigger stitch items and put all your stitches on that um just have fun with it It'll, I mean we're even going to hunt a bigfoot Ooh, so oh, right and it's quite a great fun. way to, to get sort of like a running total of your stitches for the year that's really cool right and yeah. there's posting for survival of the stitches is really easy it's it follows the same kind of general guidelines all the challenge groups follow start photo reply with your end photo with your total stitches do we and need then, a password for this one um i did not see a password um but she did say, which I thought was interesting, is you can roll over stitches. So if you needed to do 250 and you did two, say 300, uh -huh. 50 stitches can roll to your next monster. That's, right. oh, that's right. interesting. I thought that, that that's a little bit different than what she did with the team. So yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited. And you get 10 treasure for every thousand stitches. So for every hundred stitches, you earn a treasure. Ooh. For every thousand, you get ten treasures. So totally worth doing. We need that. Yep. Treasure. Definitely. Need that so treasure. I'm excited about that one. See awesome. how far I can get and what I can capture. Yeah, and I know that Survival of Stitches is still open. It's it's a whole like um, I don't know, like a it's a role playing game where you're in a little settlement. Now I know there's still spaces in some settlements, not ours, but other ones still have spaces. So if you're interested, look it up. You go to the little hotel post and say you're there or sit there and watch for a bit. Um, that's lots of fun. We're really, I think everyone in our group's enjoying it. So it's awesome. All right, Laurie, what's yep. happening in pop culture? Pop culture. Okay. So pop culture is doing 
ABCs of stitching. And this is really fun. It sounds really fun and it's very flexible. Um, the basic premise is that there's, um, of course, you know, there's 26 letters in the alphabet, but there's different levels of participation. And so there's an easy participation at 100 stitches, medium at 250, hard at 500, and extreme at 5,000. And the goal is for each letter of the alphabet, you find 10 things in your whip that begin with that letter. And she's offering a bit of leniency for those really tough letters. Um, uh, it's in the instructions, but I can't really put my finger on them. But of course, like Q or something like that. So you arrange your annual post however you want. For instance, I would probably post all of my letters A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You don't have to stitch in order. As you're stitching along, you find items within your whip. You don't have to be stitching on that item at the moment. It just needs to be in your whip. And so you say, I am stitching for an aardvark. And you have that aardvark in your whip that you're stitching on. You would post a start and end and claim one of your A's for aardvark. Um, you can't double dip within the same event. So say I'm stitching for that aardvark in Anzac, because I'm sure it has an aardvark because it has everything. <laughs> so I'm stitching on Anzac. I can't use those same stitches for say S for shark or uh, K for koala. Um, I can still use Anzac and I can still stitch on it, but I can't use that same claim post for multiple um, items. And you just arrange it however it makes sense to you, however you're going to work. You can arrange it by whip and put it in your alphabet letters. Um, it's just on your um, initial post, which is like your cover post, you'll need to list out what tier you're working under. So if you're doing easy or 100 stitches, you need to claim that in your initial post, or if you're doing medium or hard, et cetera. And then for all of your claims and all your alphabets, you arrange it the way you need to, what makes sense for the way you stitch. Wonderful. Yeah, yeah, that sounds good. So so I can do Anzac for three letters. I just have to do 250 stitches three times, one for A, one for S, and one for K. Correct. Whichever, beautiful. If that's the, the path, right, because there's easy, medium, oh, hard, exactly. extreme, I was so maybe a little yeah. bit different. I and I think when you get 10, they wanted you to tag them. I think I read that somewhere, that to tag yeah. the admins when you got 10 of your letters so that they could give you the, whatever it was that they were going to give. I and thought I read that. And with all, these, with all these games, if you like the sound of it, definitely go and read it. Definitely right. go and read it. Find the, the related question thread and ask the people who are running it because they'll know the details. We're just giving you the brief overview to see what, what you're interested in. Yes. All right. Um, Natalie, what's happening in full coverage fanatics? Oh, we have three events. I'm going to talk about two of them. Carla's going to talk about the next one, the third one. First one is 22,000 stitches in 2022 challenge. It's another thousand stitches on 21,000 in 2021, where you can stitch 21,000 stitches and get it done by the end of the year. Must be on a full coverage project. You can stitch on multiple projects or just one, but it's there. I've been stitching it on just one project and I've probably got about 2,000 stitches to go and I'm done. So I'm really excited for the 2021. I reckon I could just squeak in, maybe. Um, there's a bike around Germany. Carla's going to talk about that one. I'm going to talk about the 2022 Whips and Wonders event. Um, there are 20 wonders of the world. And for each of those wonders, you're asked to stitch 5,000 stitches on one full coverage project. So you, you can have multiple projects going at once. So you can have, if you've got 20 full coverage projects, you can have 20 wonders going all at once. And it's a minimum 5,000 stitches in order to complete that wonder. Carla, did you want to talk about the biking? 
Yes, so um, the biking event, they are biking around Germany in 2022, and I have it over here on my iPad because I didn't want to, it's been a little bit since I've, I've read this. Dagmar Wichner actually created the event for Full Coverage Fanatics um, to explore around her towns in Germany, and, and she's got some great spreadsheets under the files um, that, that kind of spells out how, how many miles in between each place, and um, I actually printed it out in my my book, but do you think I would have it up when I was talking about it? There's different check-in points. Um, so you do this over the whole year, and they have an extreme version that only has a limited set of months. It's like three or four months that you do all those stitches. It's like during their biking season. So definitely, if it's something that interests you, I can't say enough. Go to the event, go to the files and look and print because people have done some amazing artwork and it prints easy enough that you can read it um, and decide which path you're going to take and, and are you going, where are you going down to, are you going to, um, she even made a file that subtracts your stitches. Now there's a stitch and there's an hourly and she did answer a question today that she, you can meld the two. Um, but the spreadsheet that she made will only either subtract hours or subtract stitches. So it doesn't intermix between the two. But I thought it was really interesting. If you do all the stitches, you will have 34,260 stitches by the time you're done with the event. So I thought that was pretty cool. That's cool. That's a lot of stitches. That's fun. So there's lots of choices. And as with any of these guys, you don't have to do them all. I don't think you can do them all. No, but, I think you really have to pick and in, in, in what you want to focus on and, and test your toes and some things that maybe spark an interest. See I, how it goes. I always start off strong, particularly with full coverage. I go, yeah, that sounds like so much fun. And then I stitch a lot of things that aren't full coverage too, but I might be able to do the wonders one or at least some of the wonders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Another one, another one this year um, is having a yearly is the mythological stitches. And the mythological stitches are, um, doesn't show me, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, the mythological stitches is having a um, year long event that they're actually relating, they're, they're jumping on the combining your love of reading with your love of stitching, which I know Full Coverage did last year and a few other ones. So basically we're gonna stitch our way through a variety of fictional works based on myth. Um, so first thing, you're gonna read or listen to the book and stitch the number of pages in the book on a single project you can relate to the book in some way. And past your reading start and end dates and let us know what you think of it if you wanna do the reading option. You're gonna stitch the number of stitches equal to the pages with a zero added. So for example, if there's 320 pages, you're going to stitch um, 3,200. Stitch the number of stitches equal to the year of publication with a zero. So if it was published in 2003, you're gonna stitch 20,030. And you can stitch on several projects to add that up. So it's three different things you could do. You don't have to do all three. Um, so if you don't have something that you can fit into the book, you would go with option two or three. I think option three is if you're a really, really dedicated stitcher and you wanna stitch that many stitches. They include fiction set in history, modern reinterpretations of myths, young adult anthologies, etc. In many cases, it's first the series, and if you enjoy it, read on the rest of them for your own. There's a whole list of books. It goes for miles. So there's so many options. You choose your own adventure. So I think that sounds fun, and I might have to give that mm -hmm. a go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Um, what, Carla? because none of us know it's happening in 90 starts. <laughs> I'm so excited. I'm a little bit biased because this is probably my favorite event because I had something to do with it. Um, it's the No New Starts yearly event for No New Starts 2022, and it's the travel event. Um, so prerequisites, you have to be an active member in the No New Starts 2022 group. We did have to create two groups to accommodate this travel event because there is a lot of things happening. Um, but you do need to be an active member with our main challenge group of No New Starts 2022. 
So first off, we are denying anybody that requests if they're not part of the main group. So that's where you need to go first if you want to join and it's not too late because when are we closing No New Starts 2022 down for new members, Nat? Is it? I can tell you how many hours, four days and seven hours. TikTok. Yep, four days, seven hours to get into the No New Starts 2022 group. Our challenge event, we are traveling across the United States and we are shopping at different local needlework shops as we travel. We're gonna be camping at some campgrounds along the way and we're gonna be doing some sightseeing of some local sites as we travel as well. Um, part of our traveling, we are, it will depend on your ride and we have many members right now, we're over 200 members that are already stitching their rides and stitching for like their camping passports and getting ready to go for us to kick off our first leg of the challenge. Um, unlike some of the other groups that put everything out to you right at the beginning, No New Starts is going to piecemeal it to you in different legs because we want everybody to have the most fun that we can possibly have and kind of keep us as a group as we're going along. So we will release different legs at different times throughout the year and it's going to be lots of fun. We're going to do lots of fun things. And it doesn't matter if you're a super stitcher that stitches these high thousand numbers, or if you are a stitcher that's a little on the slower side and maybe stitches 100 or 200 stitches. So there's a spot for you in this group. So when, when does the travel event start? When do we start leaving from our first destination to go to our second? That will be coming up soon. Very, very soon. Oh, I was hoping you might give a hint. Well, in very, January, very soon. We're going to be starting in January. In January, yes. We'll be See, starting. We want January. to have surprises. We want people to not, you know, not necessarily know what's coming, but have an idea of how it works. And we particularly don't want to overwhelm everyone straight up. Um, but yes, very, very soon. So get your ride stitched because you can't do anything until you have your ride. The passport's mm -hmm. optional, though. You don't have to have that. Right. And if you are in the new, new starts group and you haven't jumped in on the travel and you decide um, next month that, hey, they're having too much fun and I want to join in, we can get you in and have you start stitching your ride and you'll start stitching with the rest of us and, yeah. and join in the fun. Anything else you want to add, Lauren? Do I? No, just Wait in general. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Nothing, Nothing. I, I have to get planning. I, I have to adjust my planner for all of these new events that have come mm -hmm. and some new ones I didn't plan on joining and I think they sound really good. So I yeah, know. planning, planning, planning. Time. Yeah. All right, yeah. we're going to get off. My digital table. spreadsheet magic will be going, being kicked into overdrive over the next couple of days, getting things mm -hmm. ready. So, mm -hmm. And Nat and Lisa are going to be put, making the travel for the new, new starts as a printable. Yeah. So you'll be able to print out your travels and keep track of where you're going. So no worries there. It'll be coming when we release that first leg. And do check the files of each of the groups because it seems that a lot of the groups are catching on to making it printable that you can print for your, for your planner. So um, if not, make up your own. Um, it'll be good. All right. Well, thanks for joining us. We look forward to seeing you on the many events. Have a good time planning. Bye. Bye.